if I want to hold myself responsible for something, I would like it to be in part that I am responsible for telling stories that go beyond just whodunits. I need to talk about the human condition to a, to a greater or lesser extent. I don't, I don't kid myself. I'm not a French intellectual uh, writing, you know, impenetrable prose and struggling for a Nobel Prize. I write brain candy. I write murder mysteries. I know that. But I would like, nevertheless, to in inject in them an element of, of thoughtful responsibility and um, an element of, of um, philosophy. Um, Willie intrigues me, and, and I love to be surprised by him. So I really do very little setting forth of, a, of, of plot demands on him. He walks into the room, and I basically let him do what he'll do, and I watch him. Uh, however, I, I do impose some constraints on him. For example, if there's a knee-jerk nice reaction that anyone would say, then I don't let him say it. That's <laughs> rule number one. Because Willie's got to represent the inner, the inside of our brains, not the outside, not the pulley test, not the oh, tut, tut, oh, yes, oh, have a nice day. Oh, that's not Willie. Willie says what's what is behind most of our facades. Willie is the inner us. He's the guy, we're sitting around at, a, at, at this table, this conference table, and our boss is saying something really foolish. And we're nodding and we're taking notes. Willie is saying, boss, that's really foolish, and you're an idiot for saying it. And, and, and what does he run the risk of? Getting fired. But he doesn't care. And that's what we wish we could be. So Willie resides in some, well, is not Willie also capable of nobility and responsibility? Sure he is, because that inner voice in, of ours will also be capable of saying things righteous and true. Um, so yes, he's outrageous on one side, but he can also be quite noble on the other. Joe, I'm, I'm a little more organized about, because in this instance, uh, I like the fact that I've created a, a human hero named Joe, named, and I took that phrase from the and I take that name from the phrase a regular Joe. And what do regular Joes do? What do you and I do? We screw up. We make mistakes. And so Joe is going to make mistakes. And every once in a while a few books go by and he hasn't really aired uh, enormously. So it was, it was time for him to really sort of mess things up a little bit. And in this book he does. But, but his compensatory mechanism, just as, as Willie is capable of nobility, Joe atones wonderfully, and, and he knows how to redress. He knows how to make good on his errors, and so he does. Uh, and so they have that wonderful conversation, Willie and Joe, as they walk down the hospital corridor and sort of kiss and make up, if you will. Uh, I like that, that conversation because it allowed each one of them to maintain their turf, but by the same token rebuild their, their connection. There's this sense that, that it has become me and I have become it. Uh, I, I have now spoken of Joe Gunther and his companions for so many years that I, I know them perhaps better than anyone in my family, that I know anyone in my family. And furthermore, I, I sort of feel myself lost in days of our lives, a, a, a show that'll never end. Uh, and I'm not sure I want it to end. I don't see an end. Uh, Joe is useful as a conduit you know, for me to examine the world around us. So there are aspects of, of Joe Gunther that are enormously uh, heartwarming to me. And I, I can see that I've created a habit with which I can live for many, many years. Uh, I'm a death investigator for the medical examiner's office. Uh, if someone dies unattended uh, in the in the southeast corner of the state, then this is my week to respond and find out why they died uh, and merely explain it so that everything's squared away. That's job number one, uh, and I love that job. Uh, it, it's useful. It's interesting. It's a caring job, 
people say, oh, well, it's just dead bodies. But these, these people are related to people. And, and, and grief counseling, or at least not so much counseling, but closure is a, is a major part of that job. And I take that as seriously as I do the investigative uh, part of it. It's a story, if you will, every you know, deceased person is a story interrupted. And, and I'm a storyteller. So my training, as you know, is, is, is history and journalistic and reality-based, and my books even now are somewhat reality-based. So I pay attention to those responsibilities when I meet a dead person, uh, and, and, and part of the job description is to finish off their story. What happened, and why did it happen? And they work in a dark environment. You notice only their only their tables have lights, yeah. but there are no overhead lights, and they all, they all carry these you know, flashlights, yeah. which work. Mine doesn't, you know, typical, there we go, I rest my case. <laughs>